basically i will be focusing more on the though i have mentioned natural preservatives i will be focusing more on the natural antioxidants and meat and health so meat product is not that much popular or demanding but meat itself is important so my focus is mostly on natural antioxidant its use in meat and health and uh, in the bottom here you can see this is my youtube channel professor lpt in which the large number of lectures are available both for undergraduates and post graduates so here is the content which i am planning to cover uh, i will start with a prologue and end with an epilogue and then introduction will be about the basic life process food and health correlation and then some basics about the functional food and functional meat products and health benefits of functional foods or meat then the major part is on natural preservatives classification mechanism advantages but as i said more focus will be on natural antioxidant their mode of action and their benefits and in the third part i will summarize the large number of work done in this field large number of research has been done as a academic interest so i have tried to summarize some work briefly and then i will like to share some of our work simply we have done some simple uh, projects that i want to share and ending with a epilogue so as a prologue as i mentioned so it is a well known proverb let thy food be thy medicine some says it is from hippocrates or some says it is from ayurveda but the message is very clear that the food is very important and it should be taken as a medicine so that we need not take a lot of medicine later and that's how the next quote says when diet is wrong medicine is of no use when diet is correct medicine is of no need that's the ayurvedic proverb now i will go for actual introduction so just a few data briefly that is the insomnia diseases or lifestyle diseases in the world today the top 3 or 5 diseases causing death one is the cardiovascular disease stroke pulmonary disease followed by the diabetes and cancer these are the top 5 cause of death in the world now and this first three causing around 2 million death in 2000 and in 2019 it is about 9 million and this three causes about 16% of the total death and if we come to india we can see that diabetes is one of the great concern and in 2010 it was 15 million by 2020 it is about 17 million so there is a about 10 to 14% people affected in urban india and it is expected to be about 134 million by another 25 years one estimate shows that about 32% of this death of disease due to disease can be avoided by proper dietary manipulation and the recent two literature i saw that is promoting health and longevity through diet so by proper diet we can so much improve the health and longevity and one more is a very recent that is gut microbiome profound health implications for diet and disease so this is one of the exciting area now last one decade or so there is lot of awareness and research on gut microbiome so i would be highlighting it in when in some more occasions coming now one more thing here i want to tell that is the bottom line i have kept a special line at the bottom that is important message but sometime i won't be able to discuss it but in this case what i want to highlight these diseases metabolic diseases or lifestyle diseases one is due to the due uh, to the lifestyle or diet etc but one of the important thing is the free radicals the life is run by 
energy and that energy is produced by oxidation. So as long as there is life, energy is required. And when energy is produced, the free radicals are unavoidable. So they are the byproducts of life. And these free radicals are cause of many disease and aging. So that is where is my focus, that antioxidant. We have both inside and in the food. If we properly care that free radicals, then a lot of damage and disease can be avoided. That's the focus of this talk. So here you can see about the free radicals. That is one of the reason, not only reason, this is one of the reason for all these disease in added to the diet, lifestyle, stress, and so many things. So free radicals, probably most of the you may be knowing, it is the deficiency in energy and they try to rob and they create all the problems. But the source of these free radicals is multiple either from environment or radiation, smoking, pollution, so many things. But most common for us is the metabolic and diet. So to live, we need energy. Automatically, free radicals will be produced. And to counter that, body has its own mechanism of antioxidant and keep us safe. But sometimes we fail to do that because of the improper management or health condition or other stress condition. And the second is the food supply, if we can provide. But simultaneously, if we use wrong food or the food which is already oxidized, that can cause a concern further. So many food can have already the oxidative products and that cause further concern. So there is the antioxidant, which is very, very important for life. So in normal physiology itself, we have a couple of enzymes like glutathione or glutathione peroxidase and all that. And similarly, few vitamins. They play a major role for countering this oxidation process and maintain the normal homeostasis or physiology. So antioxidants may be defined as compounds that inhibit or delay the oxidation of other molecules by inhibiting the initiation or propagation of oxidative, oxidizing chain reaction. Now, this mechanism of antioxidants at a cellular level, it happens at three stages, first level, second level, and third level. I don't want to go for much of it. As I mentioned, some of these enzyme, glutathione, catalase, metal binding proteins, vitamins, they are working at different stage at the cell to safeguard us from the harmful effect of free radicals, which is unavoidable. Now, antioxidants, so here, the left side, of course, some of the disease condition I have already told, the right side, different kind of phytochemicals or sometimes called as polyphenols, they have multiple activities to give us a health benefit. That's how these plant origin preservatives can play an important role for safeguarding our health. They could be, and they are first of all antioxidant for the food and they can play a role of antioxidant in our body. And also they can give other support like anti-carcinogenic, anti-allergic, anti-inflammatory. So we are going to hear it, see it again. <coughs> So now with a brief background about the process of life, I come to the functional foods. So most of our people are aware, particularly those who are scientists, they are fully aware. A lot of our scientists are working in this area in functional food or functional meat product. This is one of the high interest area I understand. So those foods which has got special health benefits, not only as a nutrition, beyond nutrition, so extra physiological benefits. That's how they are called as functional food. Or sometime if we can reduce the risk of some disease through some food, if we can reduce the risk of some disease, then also it can be called as functional food. Now, in case of meat, we can do it by two way. One is from the meat production side. We can feed the animal different kind of all these phytogenic things and which will be stored in the meat or fat and that can be delivered to the human being. So that is one way of producing the functional meat. But for us being meat scientists or technologists, for us the approach is by meat processing. So processing means we can add it in the preservation or making products 
where it will be carried to human system and give extra health benefits. So in case of, I am interested in mostly the plant origin preservatives, which can play a twin role, one side as a preservative, another side as a health benefit for the human being. So those are the phenolics or polyphenolics or phytochemicals. And in addition, there are other omega-3 fatty acids, fibers. Fiber is very, very important for health benefit. This also I am going to highlight more later. So here again, functional food, the left side, I am trying to show all the, mostly here the plant origin source of different phytochemicals and they are source of food like flavonoids, saponins, isothiocyanates, allyl sulfides, carotenoids. These are different group of phytochemicals available in different kind of food, which are having normally healthy benefit. So if we consume all these regularly, automatically we are benefited, but then we can also use them in the food or in the meat as a preservative and that becomes a delivery to the human system and we call it functional food. Sometimes we can have dehydrated foods also and they are, as I already mentioned, they can have several benefits on health, including cancer, obesity, immunomodulation. Here is a brief uh, summary about the development of functional meat products. So as I said, they are the healthy products and these four aspects we have to cover, that is the technological, scientific, commercial and legal. These four aspects we have to fulfill and it is done by enhancing either texture, nutritional value and health properties. In the health properties, as I have already mentioned, either we can add the phytochemicals, which will give us health benefits or probiotics or fibers. So these are multiple approach for developing functional meat products. There is a, another way to explain further to improve the meat products. So one is the nutritional enrichment by dietary fiber, antioxidant, and probiotics by reducing the harmful component. I have mentioned earlier, if we can reduce the harmful component and reduce some disease, then that food can be called as a functional food. So this is also well known to us nowadays, low salt, low fat, low nitrate products, particularly even nitrosamine, which is coming from the cured and smoked meat. In fact, low fat is not that much concern nowadays. There is a lot of changes, which I will take up again. This is one more way of explaining about the development of functional meat products. So there is a lot of consumer awareness about the food and the health benefits. And there is a lot of awareness about the risk of cardiovascular or other metabolic diseases. So here are a few uh, things again explained like use of probiotics, dietary fat. Dietary fat is, uh, of course, nowadays there is a change I said there is not that much concern about the dietary fat. Now the USDA has taken it out from the list that fat should be controlled in the diet. But of course, there has to be a moderation. Then sodium, of course, need to be reduced and adding vitamins, minerals, or other phytochemicals. That becomes a functional food. Here we can see what I was telling, the increasing the shelf life. So using the plant products, either extract or different ways of application to increase the shelf life in the processed meat product. Thereby, it prevents the antimicrobial, I mean microbial growth and spoilage, and it can prevent the oxidation process, and it can reach the human body and play a role as an antioxidant. And in addition to that, the diet has a tremendous influence on the gut microbiota. As I mentioned, this is a very, very new uh, awareness and research going on. I will highlight more on this later. This particular one is trying to show different aspects of functional meat products when we add all these components, either a plant or animal origin. So some of the things like dietary polyphenols that can change the gut microbiota. So the profile of gut microbiota can make a lot of changes in the gut health and thereby it can affect our overall healthy conditions. So it depends on these components, particularly in the left side, if we see the fibers, fibers played a major role 
in the gut microbiota. There are some particular group of organisms, they can ferment it and produce short chain fatty acids. The short chain fatty acid is very, very important for regulating our gut health. And sometimes they produce different kinds of neurotransmitters and that directly have an influence on our brain. So thereby it can help in our mental status or brain and gut coordination. So there is a gut brain axis, GBA, gut brain axis, that connection should be perfect. Then only we can have a best of health. Not only that, the profile of the gut microbacterium can make that lot of changes. So if it is favoring with the short chain fatty acid, then it will favor the probiotic growth and that prevents most of the pathogenic or harmful bacteria. Thereby it can make a lot of changes. Even the latest research says some of the uh, pathogens like E. coli, et cetera, which produce lipopolysaccharide as a toxic agent, that lipopolysaccharide is one of the reason for creating diabetes. So if we can control the gut profile, then we can prevent this kind of organisms and automatically we can prevent many of the metabolic diseases. Here again, it is about the dietary fibers added in meat products and their benefits. So we can see here, it improves the product quality sensory point of view. It has got the oxidative changes. It can evade the, prevent the lipid oxidation or rancidity and stabilize the color because in case of meat, oxidation is one of the reason for destabilizing the color also. Then technologically, it improves the product quality like the water holding capacity, cooking yield, all this, and decreases hardness, springiness, and shear force. And the dietary fiber improves dietary fiber content, improve antioxidant content as content. So these are different aspects of adding dietary fiber in meat products and health. Here is bioactive peptides. So these are mostly prepared from uh, meat or marine origin. So these bioactive components has got a lot of health benefits. And sometimes they can be anti-hypertension, anti-cancer, anti-coagulant, anti-tumor. So probably some of us are very much well aware about the ACE inhibitor protein, carnosine, ansarin, like that. But I'm not much focusing on this plant origin by peptides. So this is another one from meat. Uh, we can get these peptides which are helpful on health like antihypertension, antioxidant, antimicrobial. So now a little bit first I want to tell about the nutrients in meat or meat products. To be frank, meat itself is having lot of extra health benefits, not only as the nutrition, it has got extra health benefits like say conjugated linoleic acid. It is having a lot of health, special health benefits like anti-cancer or antioxidant, omega-3 fatty acid, which is present in meat, which has got a lot of beneficial health benefits, choline, uh, riboflavin, or say selenium is an antioxidant. It has got tremendous role in our health, zinc, is, is a part of many coenzymes and playing important role. Ion, of course, meat is one of the best source of ion and uh, magnesium. So I feel meat is already having so many extra health benefits and that way meat as such should be considered as a functional food. So here is the health benefits of meat. Uh, it is in case of anemia, it is very good. In case of rickets, how it helps is it is a very good source of vitamin D. So if we take vitamin D, it helps in absorption of calcium and thereby it can play an important role in bone growth and rickets. It can reduce heart diseases that is because of the presence of unsaturated fatty acid. Though people say that it is a problem, meat is a problem for heart health. It's not always true. It depends on the kind of meat and the quantity of meat. If we eat meat in a moderation, Definitely, it is not a problem. The saturated fatty acid is only about 30%. That is not really a matter of concern if we consume it moderately. So this is one more, maybe some of the points 
are new here. So B12 is a very, very important in hemopoiesis and also even nucleic acid synthesis. And some more B vitamins are very important, B2 and B6. And of course, dietary sodium is low. So that is good for our hypertension or heart health. Depression sometimes it is good. Low level of cholesterol. Normally meat is low level of cholesterol. Saturated fat is actually low, though it is wrongly being uh, uh, popularized as a against uh, health or cholesterol and all that. So this particular slide is a little bit congested, but here I have uh, summarized a very important review article, which is focusing with a major emphasis on gut microbiota. Gut microbiota play a very important role. So it summarizes large number of latest research where they say that the diet has a tremendous influence on the microbial profile in the gut and that has an influence on our many of the disease, including the including diabetes or cardiovascular disease and many things. So I don't want to read it fully. So when the diet is proper, particularly fiber, one of the major concern for our diet is fiber and meat is very uh, absent with fiber. So if we can add a lot of fiber with meat, then a lot of problems can be solved. So when we have high fiber with plants and fruits, vegetables, then we will have a proper balance of my, uh, microbes in the gut. So they are called alpha species. Alpha species are healthy and then anti-inflammatory omega-3 we have. So in that case, we'll have lean body mass and this Prevotella. Prevotella is a very good bacteria which is helpful for us whereas the bacteroids are very bad for us. So because of the change of diet, these bacteroids will increase. So in case of Western countries or where we see that a lot of propaganda against meat is due to too much of meat intake daily, then this kind of change is possible. When meat is taken too much, when the vegetables and other things are less, even fiber is not there, then some different group of microbes will grow and that change entire atmosphere in the gut, which has got direct influence on different aspects, including diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and other things. So I mentioned about a gut-brain interaction. So actually brain, uh, gut has got the largest amount of nerve tissue after the brain. So that's why sometimes gut is called as the second brain. And there is a perfect link between this brain and gut, so that is called gut-brain axis, GBA. Now, function of this axis depends on the atmosphere in the gut. So if we have wrong profile, then the metabolism, I mean the metabolites will be different and that affects the axis and it has got a tremendous impact on our mental health, attitude and everything. Whereas due to a different profile, like as I said, some of the good bacteria, they support the probiotics growth. So when probiotics are growing automatically, it removes the growth of pathogenic organism. So it can avoid all the subclinical inflammations in the gut, that is one thing. And when some group of organisms, I said, they produce short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are very, very helpful and good. From that, different kind of neurotransmitters are produced like GABA, et cetera. So when that happens properly, then the gut-brain axis work perfectly and it makes a lot of impact on our health. So this is very brief. It's a very large topic only on gut microbiota and health. I, we can have a talk only on that maybe in future when I get it, an opportunity.